Alrighty folks, this is Tom from Anti-Proton.com and as you can see I have a uh, love the Model 12 with a 44-2 scintillator connected up here and we have a rainwater sample and it's off my car. See all that crap? I still don't know 100% the mechanism by how this works. I know it's right on washout because I've tested it like a dozen times now or more with my you know gamma spectrometer. And, but I do know that it seems to want to come off the car more than it wants to come off of free caught water. So it's probably in the free caught water and landing on the car. Because it came in the car crud to start with because it wouldn't last long enough. So whatever. Maybe one day we'll figure out what the mechanism is. But until that time, let's play with it. So this isn't going to prove anything. We're just playing with it. So we'll put it in this petri dish. Or a silicate, of course. This is a uh, Pyrex. Real Pyrex. Take this. Stick it inside of the lead culminator. Got the sound. Here's my clock. It looks like a CDV 700 dial, doesn't it? Anyway, let's cut that down to slow mode. Cut the sound off. Um, you notice from that we're getting about, we're in the times 10 mode, so 0, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Almost exactly at 1,000 counts per minute. Plus or minus. So let's time lapse this. This all is going to be time lapsed. Time lapse. You know you love time lapse. So we'll put that on and see if the rate goes up and the rate does go up not too much but hopefully enough give that another couple seconds switch it to fast let it get up there All right, we're at 16 and we're gonna do time lapse in just a second like super duper 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 time lapse like super duper time lapse like and we'll let like an hour go by in like three or four minutes. So, eh, I got an email. All right, so it looks like nearly 1,800 counts a minute, and we were about 1,000, so about 800 counts a minute above background. Still climbing, actually. Squeeze that down in there good. Squeeze that down in there good. All right, so, about 1,800 counts per minute. Let's come back. I have up to 137 minutes of time available to me in this camera before it runs out of go juice. So let me get my um, clock here, my stopwatch, and we'll go. Catch you on the flip side.
Alrighty. So here we are. It's been an hour and 25 minutes. And um, 22 is 44. Is, I think about 66 minutes. Wait, 2 and 2 is 4. No, 88 minutes. So 67, 80. About an hour and 28 minutes or so is how long I thought it would take for this to completely decay. And that's, well, that's not too far off. Now, I haven't actually seen the video, like I just said, because of the fact that I, um, uh, well, just walked in here, and I see this is down to a 1,000 counts a minute. I remember it being much higher. So, God only knows. But I think that I've caught the entire decay nice and happy on film, which is kind of neat. Now, this is um, almost assuredly radon washout. There's actually no way to know for sure that this is radon washout because I haven't tested the isotope. This machine, when connected to a gamma spectrometer, can do that. But in its current configuration, it can't. Decay curves are not sufficient to determine an isotope. Now, what we do know is that um, uh, when experimentally tested, every single time, uh, at least let me speak for myself, every time I've ever experimentally tested uh, uh, rainwater that's radioactive, I have found every single time, and this is dozens of times, that the predominant isotope, the one that's making the obvious apparent radioactivity, is always going to be, uh, uh, well, with this type of device, is going to be bismuth-214 and lead-214, and there's a, a host of others, too, but basically the point is right on washout. That is not to say that there are no other isotopes in here. Uh, so what that means is that this decay curve, uh, we cannot prove what it is until we absolutely test it the way science works. But, like, when I drop an object, it, I can't actually tell you that gravity is what caused it to, to be pulled down to the ground. I can tell you that in all other uh, tests ever made, gravity was the actual reason that it was brought down, so it is incredibly likely to believe that it is so likely so that we should just go ahead and believe it probably is. The same goes with this. If it were cesium-137 that made it radioactive, it sure certainly wouldn't have decayed before our eyes. Which is not to say it's not in here, it's just to say that it's not the predominant thing that's making it tick. You get the idea? Okay, because some people don't seem to get that when I explain it. I don't know why, it seems kind of obvious, but... Um, most of you get it, so don't worry, I'm not talking about most of you. Most of you figure out what I'm talking about, but some of you sometimes argue with me and like don't get what I mean by predominant versus not at all. There's a complete difference there, so uh, thank you to the rest of you. Anyhow, so that was fun, and it doesn't seem to have hurt my detector in any conceivable way, but it's sealed, so that's probably why. And um, just, just, because, just because everybody always likes it, Let's turn this to times 100. 0, 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. Sound on. Little cesium 137 check source. So, anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, there you go.